Uh, hello, I'm Harry. I'm yeah, from the University of Sheffield. Um, my project is going to be involving uh, exploring the landscape of sigma hole interactions. So first things first, we should probably cover what sigma hole interactions are. So they're a class of uh, non-covalent interactions that can um, rival the strength of uh, hydrogen bonds and are becoming more and more important into research nowadays. Uh, the most well-known one, of course, is halogen bonding. Um, but the same concept uh, can be applied to uh, calcogens, um, which is the oxygen group, nitrogens, the nitrogen group, uh, tetrals, which is the carbon group, and they're even finding in the aerogen group, which is uh, the noble gases. Um, so they're called a sigma hole interaction because of uh, these uh, blue maxima regions on these uh, ESPs. Um, and they are regions of positive uh, charge caused by anisotropic charge distribution, um, which is caused by the covalent bonding to uh, an electron withdrawing constituent. Uh, these can form uh, attractive interactions with um, lone pair containing atoms, pi systems or anions. Um, so the interest in these interactions is that of them being a stabilizing interaction. So use in uh, self-assembly, um, particular interest in stuff involving proteins due to the prevalence of sulfur residues in these systems, um, stabilizing cat catalysis. And then much like the example on the right, uh, crystal engineering in the, uh, this co-crystal of um, flora, iodo, benzenes, and other uh, constituents, uh, the hydrogen bonding and halogen bonding uh, control the morphology of this crystal. Um, so the aims of my project, uh, I'm aiming to create a generalized search criteria for each uh, type of this sigma hole interaction. So this is like a geometric criteria of like uh, how close they are, the uh, angles of each different constituent. Um, and with the aim of this to create a subset of the CSD for, of containing these sigma hole interactions. And then um, I'm going to create a statistical model based on uh, computational calculation of distances to neighbours. Some of the work that um, my group have done in the past on a simple model for halogen bonding, um, which is basically it's not it's not really machine learning. It's just more like optimizing some parameters uh, to rapidly estimate these interactions. Uh, symmetrically identical. So uh, implement into a CSD Python API program. Uh, so it will recognize new structures that are deposited into it that would contain a sigma hole and spit you out a estimate of the interaction energy of that uh, moiety. Um, so first stuff I've been working on really is kind of a, a data exploration um, exercise. So interactions in the CSD are defined by uh, close contacts, which um, are within the sum of van der Waals radii or less, um, and because of the uh, inherent uncertainty of um, van der Waals radii, you add an extra 0.2 angstrom into there just to try and recover some of those longer range interactions because they do tend out towards infinity. Um, now, sigma hole interactions do tend towards being linear along the extension of the covalent bond due to that being where the sigma hole may lay. And, uh, this is especially so for halogen bonding systems, although for the other sigma hole interacting systems, uh, the deviation away from the uh, linearity is a bit more pronounced. Um, so the system here on the right uh, is a just simple halogen bond to uh, an sp3 nitrogen species. Um, and as you can see from this, uh, the highly linear, strong contacts are all uh, bromine and iodine-based species, species, which is to be expected. 
um, and they show very strong trends, which I can learn something from. But the chlorine species just they seem to just show very little trends and deposit a lot of noise. So I need more uh, criteria to uh, separate these and they needs to be based on some sort of uh, backing from the interacting uh, moieties. So I need to do some computational work from this. So I've been trying to resolve uh, the size of these sigma holes and uh, the strength of them by plotting these uh, electrostatic surface potentials, which you can see on the right here for a, a range of um, calcogen species, with each with a uh, two trifluoromethane uh, atoms bonded to them to be this incredibly electron withdrawing group. So it gives you the largest magnitude uh, sigma hole that we can. Um, and as you can see going down, this is looking at the face of the calcogen. Uh, they do uh, change inside and kind of blur into one around that, which uh, poses some interesting questions on how to decide these uh, angular cutoffs. And then moving past this, I'm going to uh, calculate these interaction energies um, from crystal structures in the CSD. Uh, and then if, if they're uncertain, do some uh, energy decomposition analysis uh, through a method such as symmetry adapted perturbation theory. Um, to resolve each of the components of these interactions, because there's an electrostatic component, an exchange component, um, polarization, dispersion, even charge transfer in some cases. Um, so it's difficult to uh, resolve these interaction energies. Um, that's basically what I've got so far on first year, so I'm just getting started. I'd like to thank my supervisors. Uh, Grant and Lee, and of course my CCDC supervisors, Elner and Joe, uh, they've been great. Uh, thank you all for listening. That's brilliant. Good progress there, Harry. Well done. Um, so has anyone got any um, uh, questions or observations at this stage for Harry um, out there? Anyone? Oh, Simon. OK, go ahead, Simon. Right. Hello, Harry. That that was uh, that, that that was a nice talk. Thank thank you very much. Um, uh, when when I hear about um, when I hear people talk about these these new types of interactions, you know, the nitrogen internet interactions mm. and uh, halogen bonds and uh, and 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 so forth, and then and and uh, and, and the example you showed was uh, was was rather like this, and I'll, I'll come on to it in a minute, but. Uh, when you when you look at these long contacts and the primary bonds and the lone pairs, you often find that uh, uh, th that you can predict the geometry by VSEPR. Um, the the uh, the the um, use unit cell. It is is Miles' supervisor Jack Passmore did did a huge amount of work in the late 1970s um, on on SBF3 SBF5 adducts. Uh, and um, and and these these the, the, there are a whole series of them, and they have these sort of fantastically complicated structures. But he was able to analyze the uh, the the um, the geometry of the of, of the fluorine to antimony contacts using VSEPR. So in your case, in the case of your um, uh, of your uh, amine, your NR three, and the uh, and the long contact to a halogen, I wonder. To what extent is the geometry that you're seeing um, a trigonal bipyramid? Because basically you've got uh, three three R groups, you've got a lone pair and you've got your long contact. And uh, essentially what you could have is an equatorial plane containing two R groups, um, gave us one axial uh, interaction of 180 degrees, which you showed really nicely. Uh, consisting of your long contact and the third and, and the third R group, so so um, so so I think um, I, it, is is that do you th in what you've seen so far? Do you think that's a fair do you think that's a fair comment generally for these 
new classes of interactions that we're seeing? It, yeah, there is like considerable amount of debate in these sort of uh, interactions. Like there, there have been multiple different models posited, um, like um, Mulliken complexes uh, in or an outer sphere, um, and of course. Uh, stuff coming from the SEPR and uh, MO theory. Mm. Um, the the sigma hole me model, which it it is still a model, um, but there's I know there's been a recent uh, study where they've done a Kelvin force probe microscopy or something like that, um, where they've actually been able to uh, physically image these sigma holes. Um, Yes, uh, but the whole idea of a sigma hole is that is is that the contacts are formed in such a way as well. The sigma hole is where the lone pairs aren't. Yeah. Right? So so the contacts are formed between the lone pairs, and 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 you can see the parallel there between um with uh, with with um with VSCPR. It's it's, it's it, it, it 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 will be interesting to see as as part of this work the extent to which. The, the geometries that you see doing this doing this properly with 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 modern with one with mo with modern methods uh, can can, uh, can can be interpreted in the light of that in in in, in the light of VSEPR in the same sort of way that Bader's uh, work on uh, distribution of lone pairs and so forth uh, had had a really nice parallel in this very old model. That's that's basically what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think it's interesting. Right. Follow, a you. little tiny follow up on that, which is interesting. It, 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 mean, it means, Harry, in your in your study, it means it might be interesting to not just look at things that are bond, uh, non bonded, but see if there are any genuine examples of where you're seeing bonds formed in the CSD or described in CSD. Because years ago, there were people that looked at um, uh, um, Hans Bierbergi and Peter, guys like that looked at reaction coordinate mechanisms in the CSD and whether you could see like S4, uh, SN4 reactions going on and, and actually map them through through structures that are non-bonded through to bonded structures, then onto other non-bonded structures. And I wonder whether you could see something related to that in the in the data that you've got. Yeah, that would be very interesting. It's a interesting um, route of research going further. Yeah. Yeah, thank you.